<clears throat> just a point that um, the data match legislation is, is out of scope. It's not in part three. I'm calling Andrew, um, Andrew Little. Thank you. Uh, Mr Chairman, it's a pleasure to take a call on this bill. And Mr Chairman, just point out that um, uh, although Labor will support this, uh, this bill and does support this bill, it is a bill that deals with what is an unfair approach to funding tertiary education, but makes it a little fairer. And in particular, part three and its redefinition of income means that those who can source their wealth, or in particular their income, from sources that up to now would not have been captured by the definitions of income will now have that captured. And that is entirely fair and appropriate, because without that, uh, Mr Chairman, it would mean that, uh, in fact, there are people who can uh, conceal or hide or otherwise shelter their income and have it un uh, remain unaccessible uh, for the purposes of uh, the student loan scheme. And that is unfair, because that is an approach that favours the wealthy and does not, uh, does not at all uh, have an impact on those who find it more difficult to... Uh, to meet the rigorous requirements of repayments of, this, uh, of, of loans under this sort of scheme. And let's remember that this scheme, uh, in the absence of full state funding of tertiary education and, and an approach that requires more uh, private funding for tertiary education, this scheme at least uh, sort of knocks the rough edges off that, off that approach. It means that it makes it accessible to people uh, tertiary education accessible to people, whereas it might not otherwise be. But for that element of fairness to work, it means that when it comes to repayment of those loans, is that everybody should be treated in a fair and appropriate sort of way. And it's all very well for Mr Goldsmith to lament uh, the, what he describes as the cost of the scheme and the fact that there's a large amount outstanding. Actually, the real measure is the number of people now who get to benefit from, from tertiary education or at least up till now, because we know that those pressures are growing and those pressures are getting harder and that there are tertiary institutions where the pressure is really on now to lift fees and that is putting more pressure on the student loan scheme and more pressure on, uh, on uh, uh, both students and, of course, graduates. Because no matter how high the fees or the higher the fees are, the more that has to be borrowed. And the more that has to be borrowed, uh, the, the greater the pressure it is on graduates to repay once they get out and get out into the labour market and in the workforce. So, in that respect, um, it will help to make the scheme more viable long term by broadening the definition of income, uh, and that is a good thing. That is uh, a welcome thing. And of course, um, what I think is very welcome from this side of the house, as uh, my colleague David Cunliffe pointed out, is that that incentive that was really a, uh, a godsend to those who could afford it, the very wealthy, to repay their loans uh, very early, very quickly, the 10 per cent bonus, that will no longer apply, so that everybody is treated fairly in that regard. Yeah. If you accelerate your payments, well, that's good for the scheme. If because of the, the, the job you go into, if you're a, a good, hard-working Kiwi graduate and you go off and do some sort of honourable, noble job like being a teacher or, 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 might I suggest, a union lawyer, then you will not be penalised because you don't have an income that means you, that you can pay massive lump sums off your student loan. And, um, and of course, uh, we should welcome that because you know, this is not a government that uh, has enjoyed a particularly friendly relationship, uh, less with teachers, uh, even less so with union lawyers, I might add. Um, uh, from my experience. So I think these are very welcome changes and it's for that reason that we welcome it. But none of that should detract from the fact that every effort should be made when it comes to tertiary education to ensuring that those who are talented, those who display the aptitude, those who have the skills, should have access to it. Because there are still people, still young people in particular, and oh, not just young people, adult students as well, who are at a stage where they could perform well in tertiary education but simply don't have uh, the means for whatever reason to get there and to enjoy the benefits of that. The more people who we can have enjoying tertiary education, uh, lifting their skills, the better that is for New Zealand as a whole. So anything that can be done to lower the barriers, to make it easier, uh, to create an incentive for people to get in there, 
That's good for New Zealand. And so for that reason, uh, we welcome uh, measures like this, we welcome this legislation, and we will support it. Mr Chair. Uh, Ian McKelvey. Yeah, I move that the question be now put. Uh, the question is that the question be now put. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Members, party votes called for. I'll ask the clerk for a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes opposed. Green Party. First. New Zealand First. Three votes in favour. Māori Party. Three votes in favour. Mana. One vote opposed. Act New Zealand. One vote in favour. United Future. One vote in favour. Brendan Horan. One vote in favour. Members, the ayes are 72, the noes are 49. The question will be put. We have the Minister's amendments as set out on SOP number 185. The question is that the amendments be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question now is that part three is amended. Stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. We move to the schedules. Schedule one. We have the Minister's amendment as set out on SOP number 185. The question is that the amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question now is that Schedule 1 as amended stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Uh, we move to Schedule 2. The question is that Schedule 2 stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Uh, we're now on Schedule 3 and we have the Minister's Amendment as set out on SOP number 185. The question is that the amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question now is that Schedule 3 is amended, stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Members, we now come to clauses 1 and 2. The question is that clauses 1 and 2 stand part. Uh, Dr David Clark. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, Mr Chair, the clauses 1 and 2 in the legislation of course refer to title and commencement and uh, these are often debated in a lively fashion and, uh, and, and members suggest alternative titles perhaps uh, in some cases that the legislation should never come into effect and uh, I don't intend to debate the timing around uh, this bill because um, while we disagree with the introduction of the Henry VIII clause, we uh, in principle support the introduction of a fairer means of collecting it. Uh, as my colleague uh, Andrew Little has alluded to, the attempt to make sure that um, all, all uh, types